everyone. Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're working on a little project, like a little travel kit. It's a needle book and pin cushion. Kind of come up with the idea by myself. It's only two inch squares and put them together. It's a little four patch and a four patch. And I use some of my very adorable sewing material that I have here in the shop. And there's a little needle book. You got your needles in there. Um, I didn't have any felt, which is normally this is what this piece is here right here, but I used my white cotton in, um, uh, batting. So why not, right? And this is great for when you travel or if you go to classes or anything like that you can actually put even a couple of machine machine needles in here too as well so you have a couple of hand needles have a couple of machine needles just in case you're doing jean or jersey or whatever depending on your course uh, my machine needs if i'm doing anything to with an embroidery needs an embroidery needle so you know you can always put it in here as a safekeeping sort of thing right and you just i thought it was really kind of cute so check that out and of course there's a little ribbon to tie together but if you and i have a little bit of beans uh beads in here not beans uh beads like pellets the poly pellets sort of thing so that's in there just a little bit give a little bit of weight not too much and then of course cotton batting to finish it off okay and here's i'll just show you a little bit of some of the material that i use today okay here it's got some sort of all the measurements and tape measurements and buttons and you know lovely notions and all sorts of things and counts to 10 and then here's some beautiful uh scissor fabric that i absolutely love i got a meter of it at first and this is all that i have left because i made a few projects with it and then of course this other lovely it looks like tattoos uh but it's got like you know handwork and handmade and um what is it make do and and mend, old faithful for the pair of scissors, that sort of thing, you know, and handmade, you know, it was very lovely. I thought it was very, very kind of fun. So why not make, you know, use some of that very special fabric that to deal with sewing and knitting and crocheting or whatever sort of crafts and go from there. So if you didn't want to use a ribbon like this, you could use a little piece of elastic and a button to close your top here, okay? So if you didn't want this, you'd have to make sure you put the elastic in there and the button over here, and then you would just be able to pop the elastic around the button and it would, <laughs> once you stitch it out, it would stay in place, okay? So there's another idea. If you don't want to tie it, maybe you're uh, not as dexter dexterous as you used to be or something like that, or you want to make this as a little project for a little one, uh, that would be a good way too, just so they could pop the elastic around, okay? So think of that as well if you wanted to, leaving that option at the side. And this is just ribbon here. And I also just did a little yarn and did a little crochet chain and did two of those. And that also was, it's also going to be my ties for this one here. So I've, I've, as I've started it. So there's my little there and there. We'll just put that aside because that's that little set. You want to make these as a set. It's a great gift for any quilter, hand stitcher, uh, anything like that. So once they, you know, once they have their needles from here, they load them up with the thread. They can put it in the pin cushion, have it lay down and then just grab and stitch as you go. It's great for doing binding. Uh, applique, um, all those fun little cross were, or cross stitch sort of things as well, right? Okay, so I've already done one half of my booklet here, the little um, uh, book for the, the needle books, and then uh, a half of the pin cushion, okay? So I'm only just choosing to do it in the pink and the white on this set that I've done here. I mixed and matched on this one. So what we need to do is make another four patch and another pretty much two four patches and sew those together, okay? So we'll do that real quick. Oops, not sure how you got over there. Must have been stuck on something. Um, yeah, now you wanna make a matching, you know? And I tried to, uh, with this one, I had it so the letters or the text was down to the bottom. On this one, I had it so it was on the top. Like, it didn't really matter which way I flipped or flopped it, right? So, but, you know, it's, it's fun just to be able to see it all, right? And I put my walking foot on because we have to do a little um, quilting this two batting to give those those lovely little stitches and give it that little you don't have to do that part i to me it just adds that extra little bit it's so you're only sewing quarter inch from each seam on either side both sides and then of course i did a nice little base all the way around on both sides so i'll leave that there so you can kind of take a little look at that so you know what i did how i got to where i was going and I think it's great for travel, you know, we're going to go up to uh, to our family reunion in uh, what, 15 days or something like that. And uh, I want to be able to take a project um, 
you know, so I love visiting with people, but I also like to keep busy too. So, but I, you know, plan to do some swimming, maybe go for a boat ride. Went for a boat ride a couple years ago with my youngest niece. It was a lot of fun. So I know I need two and two, so I'm just going to put them all together and then I'll make the four patch and then the eight patch. So you need 16 squares, eight for one side, eight for the other to make the booklet. And then you just need eight for the pin cushion, four for one side, four for the other. And if you just wanted to use one square of fabric, you had such a busy, beautiful piece of fabric that you wanted to use, all you need to do is make it, what, four... Four and a half inches, okay? Four and a half inches by four and a half inches. And if you wanted just one piece of fabric for this as well, you need eight and a half by four and a half, okay? So if you didn't want to do the, the patch together and just want to use one strip, how about her? Don't let it hold you back. It's a great gift to give for people. And I thought, you know, Christmas is coming. There's been lots of videos on Christmas in July, and I didn't want to do Christmas in July thing. So I thought, what about thinking about gifts that we could give for Christmas if we started them early instead of making bigger projects like quilts or something like that or a block of the month or whatever. So, right. So let's think of some gifts that we can give people. And, you know, if you, and if you know somebody who just who doesn't do much needlepoint, maybe just build them the, the pin cushion. You know, they would love it. OK, now make sure you're flipping and flopping. You want to make sure you're alternating. You know, having the one on one side, one on the other. Okay, so put it together, line up that little seam, and then sew down. So that'll be the other half of this one, our little pin cushion part. Okay. And of course, we're gonna press, and then we're gonna lay it on the batting, and we're gonna stitch it up just like we did that there. Okay, just exactly like that. Okay, for now, for this one, we're gonna make another little four patch. And then we'll sew that four patch to the other four patch and then we'll give it a good press and then we'll put it on the batting and do the little quilt thing stitches, okay? Fun, fun, fun. This cute little project. And you could get uh, quite a few of these done in no time at all. And it's a great gift for somebody. You know, even somebody who doesn't really sew, you could prep them a travel one for the glove box. Put it with white thread, put it with black thread, maybe put a couple of safety pins in there you never know an elastic emergency emergency you know you never know what's going to help so all right so put that there and then make sure to line this up oops i have to go on the other side oh did i do that wrong that doesn't matter yes it does oh i gotta line it up wrong where's the same river just when I put it away. <laughs> I didn't build it the same as I should have on each one. I could do this way, but then the numbers wouldn't be the right way, and that would kind of annoy me. So I gotta flip it around. <laughs> See, some things I'm really particular on, and other things don't really bother me. It depends on the, the freeness of it, right? If I had a specific design in mind, so I wanted to make sure it continues in that fashion, so. I need to make one exactly like I did the first time around. Apologize for, oops, the delay of the seam ripper. Okay, all right, so I wanna make sure it goes here and there. I had them flipped to the wrong sides. All right, easy fix. Okay, now put those two together and then we'll give a press. Press to the four patch, press to the eight patch, and then we'll put it on the batting. And get those stitches down on either side, which is a quarter inch from the seam, which makes it look nice, nice and good. It does, it makes it look pretty to me. Okay, now let's give that a little press. Okay. And as you see beside me here, I have my six rows ready to go for tomorrow's live stream, the Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we do a live stream. And then I have all 78, because I did an extra square, uh, of my um, the cutoffs. And I put with squares and they're all squared up to five inches. So I have 
Now I have, that's gonna go on the border. So I'm very excited to be putting that together. Very, very excited. Okay, so now we have our little bit of batting, just like I did this one and that one. We're just gonna lay it down. Get a nice straight edge on this. I think I kind of twisted it as I ironed it. Okay, and then here as well. And then we're just gonna sew here, sew here, and then sew here, 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 and then we're done on that part, okay? All right, so let's get this under here. And this is why I just kept the walking foot on, can make this part a whole lot easier. Okay, feet along here. And I just took a position on the foot somewhere and kept it even on both sides. So I just did the same on this side, lined it up with the same position on the foot, just the opposite side, and kept it nice and straight. And that a quarter inch from each of those, little, that little seam separating those two squares, it makes a lovely little extra fine detail, like that extra quality that went into making the gift, okay? Okay. Twist it this way. Do the same on this side. This is a great way to use some of the decorative threads. And of course, I'm going to go all the way down because I lined this up properly. So I can do this side and then this and this real easy. Decorative threads or uh, even a different decorative stitch if you really wanted to use that, you know bobbin stitch out that you have or that one that looks like a leaf or a flower or a heart or whatever then go ahead these are the little tiny projects that can you're not doing a hole around that's outside of a bag you're just doing a little bit on like a little little booklet or like the uh, pincushion idea right so okay and then again one more on these two sides and then we're going to trim them so they fit each other the batting is trimmed right up to the fabric. And you want to make sure when you stitch together, you're allowing room to turn them right side out because you're going to put them the right sides together, okay? Now, I, to me, I don't like any of this floppy bits as I'm trying to sew things together, so I really like to come right close, like one sixteenth, I don't know, one eighth, whatever, the tiniest, tiniest. I'm just kind of riding along the outside threads making sure everybody is together. I don't like anything that's not all together all at the same time, okay? Oops, that's okay, I'll need that in a minute. <laughs> Okay, so that's the big one. Now we just need to do the outside of the little square and then we're ready to rock these two guys together. Either take your rotary cutter and your ruler or just a nice sharp pair of scissors and just cut right along where the fabric and the batting meet. Okay. So you get a nice square. Okay, this would be the last part that we need for the pin cushion. So that'll be those two together. Okay. And then this part is for the needle book. And that's what I'm going to try to do is hopefully think of uh, something that can be easily as a gift for the next few months before we get prepped for Christmas so we can at least do a little couple on the side. Okay, so now that we have these little bits together, okay, no matter which way we flip and flop them, they're going to be the same. Okay, so we want to pin these or just line them up. Make sure your seams, 
These little seams right here are kind of lined up the best you can. Pop a pin in if you need, and you're gonna leave, your, leave yourself a space to turn this right side out. So between from here and here, leave it open. Stitch here, come right to the corners, pivot, come here, pivot all the way across, and then uh, we're gonna nip these corners just off a little bit to be able to turn right side out. And this is where one of these handy dandy tools, or chopstick if you need, or have, or whatever, I just, uh, or a very, uh, dull set of uh, scissors, like not so sharp, so you don't poke through, okay. All right, so let's put a pin in, because we want those seams to match up. Okay. Of course, we always do the best we can. Okay. All the way down over here, go to the corner. And up and pivot. Oh, and this is where we want to put our handles in. Sorry, I've just about forgot there. So you want to line it up on one side, tuck it in, okay? And then you're going to be able to do a little couple back stitches. You're going to flop them both on the inside here, okay? Here and here. Tuck them both in there. Okay, and then come across, do a little back stitch, come across again right to the corner, all the way across the bottom. As you can see, you may want to put a pin in here if you really, really, really want those seams to match up exactly. Okay, come all the way down to the corner, pivot. Make sure this guy's lined up on the halfway point like it should be. Make sure he's sticking out just a, a wee bit. Make sure you catch all those little, um, either the ribbon or the yarn or the thread or whatever it is that's there to help. Or the elastic if you're doing with the button, the button elastic or button idea. Okay, one more. Foot up. Okay, come in a little bit to here. Okay, there we go. Now take the pin out. And we're just going to nip off the corners. Don't don't worry about that because it may actually loosen your uh, yarn if you were using yarn or something on the inside, okay? So just kind of lop off those little cornery bits. Now take this with that little hole that we left and we're going to feed all that right side fabric out through that hole, okay? And then this is where this is fabulous little tool or chopstick, okay? Come in and poke out those little corners to make it as pretty as possible. You really want those pristine corners because that's what's going to give you these nice little corners on here, okay? And then up on the other side, okay? Poke, poke, poke. Flatten it out a bit. If it needs a uh, press to help make things a little bit more cooperative and be a little bit more uh, persuasive under your guidance, then do so. Okay, now from there, you take that little raw edge, line those two up, and we're gonna sew all the way around, okay? Just a little bit from the edge. Now tuck that in. Put a pin in or uh, even the clamps that were a little there, whatever needs to be. I'm just gonna start at one point and just truck along. And also another reason why I just left the walking foot on because we have quite a bit of fabric to uh, be uh, trucking through here. Go all the way to the corner, just shy of. Again, pivot. And then we're also securing, again, that bit of uh, fabric or ribbon or elastic on the side part, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. He popped out, hold on. There we go. He popped out there for a second, so that makes he, he didn't want to go. Oh, we have thread. Shush, I'll tell you if we're out. <laughs> Did they pop out again? Hmm, that's good. Is it? Oh, hold on here. Oh, it was. Didn't do that the first time around. Sorry, I just realized it was raining. I don't think we were in the forecast for rain today, so I was kind of surprised by that. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the walking foot needs to hook up into the top part here. So if it pops out, just stop, cut threads, 
and re reattach it back in. It didn't do that the first time around, so I'm not sure why I did it the second time, but that, whatever, weird things happen. That's just the way life is. Okay, now trim all those uh, excess threads off. You can do that afterwards, don't have to feel about that. Okay, now this is where your piece of felt would come in. Like I said, I didn't have any felt, but it had some very nice 100% white cotton batting that I thought I could use as felt, as a felt substitute, okay? Now for this piece, you want to just come onto the inside. So you need three by six, three and a quarter by six and a quarter, whatever it is that you feel you want a piece, put in a piece, and then you're gonna stitch right down the center here, and that's what's gonna give you that little flappy bit so you can put your needles in on either side, okay? So we're just gonna line it up and do a little stitch down. Okay, and that is this project done. Come on, you, there we go. Perfect. Now you can give it a little press to so it has that book type memory. So fold it over in half. And then we're gonna do a little steam and love on the corner edge here, the fold over. Okay. All right, and that'll make it have that little book memory, okay? That'll make it wanna close instead of always trying to maybe lay open like or something, okay? And then we just put our little needles in there or pins or whatever it is we're gonna be using uh, for whatever project, whether it's cross stitching or ribbon, stitch in or whatever and we just tie a little bow okay perfect so we incorporated crocheting and sewing on that one all right and then easiest peasiest for the next one here of course line them up and again leave a little space to turn it right side out okay so if you want put a pin in i probably will just to make sure i try to keep some of those seams nice and exact you know, if you want to give this away to somebody, you want to do the best you can, right? Great little project for kids. Great project to do for, for you know, for grandma. You know, great, some anything. You know, she could take that up to the cottage or it'd be the travel one in the motor home or the RV or the vehicle or something. There's always something in the glove box. It's always a project to work on. Okay, come all the way up. Now you can put rice, uh, you know, rice or beans or anything, just to give it a little bit of weight. You don't even have to put any of that in there. You can just put the batting. And of course you can fill it to what you feel is enough. You know, I just, like I said, there's a little bit of beads in there. Not a lot, only about a spoon, maybe two spoonfuls. Okay, now I know with this small little project, you may have one a tendency to not do the corner, but if you do the corners, just even just a little bit, leave a just tiny space to turn this right side out. It looks so much better if you have those machine stitched corners, okay? So again, we're gonna lop off a little bit that we don't need, because that's just bulk inside that we we want to make sure it's uh, it's not hindering our corner. Okay, so we have all those. Then turn it right side out. Just grab one of the other corners and push through with your finger, okay? So you're helping to, to get it out correctly without ripping any stitches or forcing something through a too small of a hole. And if you reinforce those edges before you turn, it has a far less chance of ripping your stitches out and your fabric. Because that's the last thing you want is to rip your fabric, okay? All right, now, handy dandy little tool. Poke that out, poke it out. Poke it out. Sounds like I'm saying polka dot, but I'm not. Okay, and there we go. That's a cute little one. So I took my little spoonful. These are just poly pellets. I'm not sure if you can see that, but they're, make sure if you are buying these, they're great for weighted blankets and bean bags and all sorts of that. Oh, sorry, sorry, munchkin. Um, I can't really see what I'm doing here. Okay, uh, make sure you get the non-smell ones. Okay, there are stuff out there and they reek and you do not want that, okay? You want the non-smell ones. And they're just a certain little size and they're poly pellets. Don't even bother with the rounded ones because the rounded ones are gonna cost you more money. You're stuffing something, nobody's gonna care. You're gonna, you know, the, the little, they're not sharp or anything. They're just chopped up plastic, okay? So put a spoon or two or whatever it is that you feel that is enough weight 
okay I think I just did you know three or four didn't really matter felt it thought okay yeah that seems that seems good you do not want to step on these they hurt just like Lego <laughs> so and make sure you pick them all up I bumped the bowl once and spilt a whole bunch and I went and I spent a half hour and picked every little bead up <laughs> all right now for the other part oh here it is disappeared on me there we go is just some regular poly batting this is polyester fiber fill got the whole bag for five bucks clearly it's done a really good job I don't even remember when I bought that so I've done lots of kid projects with it so fluff it up a little bit little bit apologize a little bit and stick it in there just feed it in with your thumb okay and then just kind of push it in the corners a little bit. And that's where, whatever you like for stuffing thickness, thick, hard, medium, little soft, doesn't matter. It's whatever it is that you're comfortable with. And as long as it's full, you know, it's not, you don't have to have it so it's jam packed. Okay. And then from there, and then I just used a little clip to hold it closed. Well, I just went and did it with a couple of whip stitches to close that up. Okay, where's that on there? Okay, right on, right on there. Hopefully you can see that. Just a couple of whip stitches to close it. Okay, super easy. Where? Don't even know. Oh, here it is. There's the thread. Of course, put a little knot on the bottom. Then you just go in here, one side. Hide the knot on the inside of the fabrics, and you could just go back and forth or do uh, um, ladder stitch, blanket stitch, whip stitch, just even a whole back and forth all the way through, whatever, whatever makes you happy to get the project done, okay? So that is what we're doing today. Where's the other one? Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. So that's our cute little weekend project. I hope you guys make one. Hope you make a gift for someone. Or even if you just make it for yourself. Why not? Okay. Love to see what you make. And uh, have yourself a fantastic weekend. And we'll see you tomorrow on the live stream. Okay. Take care, everybody.